and then to 22 through 27. I tried to keep it light today. I know I throw a lot of scripture at you. So towards the end of the book, Revelation 21, verse 10, and then 22 through 27. Let's pray real quick. Father God, we give you the service. I give you the sermon. Speak through me. Be in our midst. Let all that are here and all that see this be touched by your wonderful hand. Let them be blessed physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, every way they can. Give us more of you, Jesus. I pray. Amen. Amen. Verse 10, 21 of the Twenty-first chapter of Revelation, verse ten. This is just the setup. This is so where John is telling us he's going. So this is the new English translation. It's going to be a little bit different than what you have, but it's pretty close, and it gives a few more descriptive words. Verse ten. So he took me away in the spirit to a huge, majestic mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Skipping down to 22. Now I saw no temple in the city, because the Lord God, the all-powerful, and the Lamb are its temples, are, are the, its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, because the glory of God lights it up, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their grandeur to it. Its gates will never be closed during the day, and there will be no night there. They will, not, they will bring the grandeur and the wealth of the nations into it, but nothing ritually unclean will ever enter into it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or practices falsehood, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Construction. Has anybody worked construction? I've done demolition before. Yes. All right, Dan, Mike, anybody else? Anybody done any housework? I'm not the most handy if guy in the world, if you didn't already know that. Know that. I can do demolition. I can tear stuff apart. I'm pretty good at that. But Well, a house needs a good foundation, right? That seems to make sense. Houses need a safe and solid foundation, a firm place to stand. Jesus talked about this in Matthew 7, building a house on a firm rock, not on shifting sand. If we build on something for the long haul, we can see the future. We should build our lives on the words and teachings of Jesus. We all need things we can count on, a solid base that will not crack or crumble. Dirt and soil erode, bricks break apart, as we've seen on part of the building here. But timber and timber ages and rots. But we have a God that has built a temple on high ground. Does anybody know what's the significance of building on high ground? In a military sense. Anybody? It's okay, I won't say you're wrong if you shout something. Well, you can see enemies coming. You won't be attacked or won't be surprised. We are his bride, his beloved, and he wants to protect us. He wants to guide us. A strong gate is needed to be fortified, like a fortress, like a castle in the ancient world. So John's vision, this is the Apostle John, we believe. Some theologians think it's a different John, but this is the one that Jesus loved. He was one of his disciples, but really we call him the Apostle. When he's set apart because Jesus had many disciples. So John's vision, a holy city, that he actually quoted in Revelation 19.9, said, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper. So this is the feast, the celebration. He has conquered death. You are part of the party. I wrote, are you ready for a party? Woohoo! Uh, I've had a Diet Mountain Dew today, and, uh, and uh, what was it? I, can't, I think it was a Dollar Tree uh, vanilla coffee, so we, we can get a little more excited, people. Okay, woohoo! Party! Amen. All right, gonna have a party this afternoon, right? Woo! Not gonna be a wild party. No. My, my uh, best friend's son, Simon, 
who has Down syndrome, but we, we joke with one another all the time. He calls me Womit. It's a combination of Wallace and Gromit, because when he was real young, they watched that claymation, Wallace and Gromit. I don't know if anybody's ever seen it, so he just put it together and calls me Womit. He was like, you'll Womit, you'll Womit, Jason. I go, no, Simon, you're Womit. You'll Womit. So he goes back and forth. But at his, at one of Dan's, uh, at his sister's wedding, Simon was taking off the clothes and throwing them on. I go, hey, Simon, it's not that kind of party. So it's not that kind of party. That's not what we're talking about. But a good time, a celebration. That's what heaven will be like. That's what's in store for us. That's what we could be happy about. So it's a vision. It's a dream. Is it for real? Some people say it's just a dream that he had. Some theologians say it's a vision. Some say it actually happened. Well, like I said a couple weeks ago in Revelation, I believe it's all three. It was and is and is to come. So heaven and earth interact here. Let's read 10 again. It says, so he took me away in the spirit to a huge majestic mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. So it's heaven to earth. Heaven has come to earth. In verse 22, it says, now I saw no temple in the city because the Lord God, the all powerful and the lamb are its temple. God, the father and the lamb, Jesus, are the light of the city. No need to go to church in the future when we get to heaven. We'll have in church constantly. It'll be constantly about praising God. There'll be no need to go to the temple. In some traditions uh, within the Episcopal Church, Anglican Church, there's low church and high church. Kind of in the Church of God, growing up in Peru, it was kind of high church in the morning, you know. You dressed up and had a suit, you were a three-piece suit. And, you know, I had dress clothes in at night. We could kind of wear our tennis shoes, but it had to be our... New tennis shoes had to be nice. We had to wear our old tennis shoes to school, which was I was always behind the other cool kids that had the cool tennis shoes. But we could dress down a little bit. No, it won't be high church and low church. It'll be church all the time, forever. That's what I remember camp meeting being like. It's like heaven. We're going to church all the time, praising God, seeing people that we love that we haven't seen since last year. That's what heaven will be like for me. In verse 23, it says, the city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it because the glory of God lights it up and the lamp is the lamb. No light is needed. God's illumination. No need for human or earthly restrictions or circumstances. God has your back. He will take care of you. His glory will illuminate all. You see, because Jesus is the light and him there is no darkness. I've been thinking of a song the last few weeks. It's a Jennifer Knapp song on her, off her first album, who's a Christian artist. And uh, some would consider her not a Christian artist now. But it says, to the pure, all things are pure. To those who defile and believe nothing is pure. It's a reference to Titus saying, to those who see the light, who in, in there, there is light. They don't see darkness. See, our darkness and our light is different than what the world sees. If we think in a pure heart and a pure mind, there is no darkness. God and Jesus are light. God the Father and the Lamb are full of light. All darkness will be driven out by him. He is so bright and he illuminates everything. In the Ukraine, in our churches, and in other communities, he will shine light. We are to be his hands and feet right now, but in heaven, he will be the eternal life. But mostly, he wants to drive out the darkness of our hearts. In verse 24, it says, the nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their grandeur to it. More than just Hebrews, in Israelites, we as Gentiles, like I've said many times, are grafted in. We'll become part of it. God has no favorites. In the King James Version, it says, he has no respecters of persons. What that means is everyone is equal. Amen. Like Betty was saying in her meditation before. All nations will come and be present, and they will bring their splendor, it says in the NIV. The very best of who they are and what they have. Because eventually, you see in the next couple of verses, those kings and kings 
because he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings, we will acknowledge him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Those things that we do for him, like Betty was saying in the meditation, well, those people have been so dedicated, God will think, oh, well, they are so much better. No, we get those achievements, we'll get those jewels in our crowns, and we'll throw them at Jesus' feet, because he's the only one that is truly worthy of all the honor and all the praise. Amen. So we all will be on the same level. So we should respect and love each other the way we should now. We will all place them at his feet. Verse 25. Its gates will never be closed during the day, and there will be no night there. No need to shut the or close the gates. No night, no darkness. It's open all the time. It used to be open, like at least in Crawfordsville, Kroger's was open 24-7 and, and Walmart. Now it's 10 o'clock, and I went a couple weeks ago to go to Kroger's at 10 o'clock at night. They're already closed. It's like kind of the excuse now the pandemic's kind of winding down. We hope that, okay, well, Lord, we didn't really make that much money at night. But see, God's not like that. He's always open. He is always open 24-7. No 9 to 5 or banker's hours. He's always open. So we should walk in the light right now so we can draw people to that light. The, the Greek Orthodox Church within America, there was two in Montgomery County. There was two in town, one moved out to the country. But part of their belief that they teach, like Church of God teaches holiness, it's all about that light being so shining so bright, Jesus within us, that people will be drawn to that. And that's true. That's true, but that's why they don't spend a lot of money in evangelistic crusades or missions or reaching out. So that is supposed to be part of us. In 26, it says, they will bring their grandeur and their wealth of the nations into it. The good old days will return. How many of us long for the good old days? Sometimes we romance it and we think it's bigger than what it was. Sometimes I think, man, what was it was it like to be a kid and have summer? You didn't have to work and it was just, you know, you could just do what you wanted all summer. So sometimes we romanticize those things, but God will bring back the glory of those last days. He will restore all things. He will restore our lost heritage. The things that we love, that we ache for, they will come back. They will bring them all to them. In 27, but nothing ritually unclean will ever enter into it. This is our warning just at the end. It's a great welcoming to those who have been under the blood of the Lamb, who are welcomed in, but it's also a warning to get yourself right and those other family and friends that are might be out there on the distance, might be out there on the edge, to draw them back in. But nothing richly unclean will ever enter into it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or practices falsehood, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Only those who have been purified by the blood of the Lamb who have had their name written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if you have not yet, I don't think there's anyone here today, but you can take this to your family and friends and take it in love and be gentle. Always when you're presenting the gospel and loving people, do it to people you love and do it from a place of kindness and respect. So have them say yes. They don't have to join the church. That's one of the reasons I love the church of God. We don't have a formal membership. If you're inside the family of God, you're a part of the church. Amen. Say yes to Jesus, to his will and his way. Not a church's organization. You're not becoming religious. You're not becoming a Jesus freak, although I personally like that label. But he will guide you and respect you. He will give you peace that passes all understanding. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes. Begin with yes. In closing, in an eternal temple, if we delay maintenance on our houses, on our church buildings, there'll be an infrastructure that crumbles. We need to maintain, keep the lawn mowed, right? We cannot ignore it forever. I need to mow when I get home this week, and I usually let the backyard go a little bit longer because I figure well, nobody sees it, so I'll just go every other week or I'll mow it a little bit higher. 
But we need to care for our buildings. We need to care for ourselves. Even more for our souls. Our homes, our businesses, our church buildings, they will not last forever. But our souls will. So how much more should we care about eternity? About each other? So let us take care of our church, but especially let us take care of ourselves and each other to love others as ourselves. After all, we will be seeing each other throughout eternity, right? Amen. So we're not going to be, not gonna be, well, I didn't like that guy on earth. I don't have to hang out with him now. All right. So we need to take time to love and understand one another. We'll be sharing heaven all through forevermore. So let's, let's start affecting each other now, today, and each other forever. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your life and your salvation. Because of your life and salvation, whom shall we fear? No one. Nothing we should fear because of you. You alone are God, and you are our foundation. You are our city of great hope. We trust in you. Thank you for this vision from John the Revelator. Give us strength to endure to the end, to love one another, to reach out to those in need. Until that day when we are forever in your glory and your presence, we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's turn to.